good evening everyone uh, i welcome you all for this webinar i am here to introduce dr manveer bhatia dr manveer bhatia is a renowned neurologist and a sleep specialist having more than 30 years of experience she was also an ex professor aims new delhi and a pioneer in the sleep medicine she founded the neurology and sleep center and sleep medicine institute for training personnel involved in this specialty she is the vice president of the indian society for sleep research her contributions have earned her the indira gandhi mahila ratan award and recognition from the american association of physician of indian origin she has mentored numerous students in the country who are now practicing sleep medicine i welcome you ma'am thank you uh what's the love for the introduction and uh, so we have a few people i think some more will join but i do not like to keep people waiting the ones who have been on time so why this topic and uh, why how this came about is because there has been a request by many people to kind of how to start sleep medicine how to promote sleep medicine and also in briefly so i will give you some guidelines but we can have a question answer session and then discuss something as to my journey or what we have learned along the way so i would request two things that people keep the videos off and keep themselves on mute because otherwise with the bandwidth the systems might start crashing so i'm just going to share the presentation and i would request people to write their questions either in the chat box which we will address towards the end so the title is today's talk is how to set up a successful sleep practice and with that uh, we go forward and so what is going to be the outline outline is before we go deeper i do understand that lots of people here are already sleep specialists or related to this field of sleep medicine in some way or the other but let's go a little briefly and introduce as to what are sleep disorders or what is a sleep disorder what is this concept of a sleep center and then of course the next step is how to start it and how to achieve success and the foundation for all this is something called as a business plan and that's what we will discuss in brief and before that we delve further let's go a little deeper into this word called what is success so it's interesting what does the definition say and what is really success but i think it's important to understand that it means different things for different people so we cannot compare somebody else's journey with us we can also not compare somebody else's goals with us so does it mean that for you to be famous does it mean to be rich does it just means that i need to accomplish my goals and or to achieve what i want so i is an individual which are all of us individually so the other way to look at it is that success is also a journey success is not an end point so when we do talk about this thing that how to set up a successful sleep practice we will go slowly and deeper into this meaning that's why it's important for each one of you to understand write what is it that you want to achieve so the other way to look at it is as is a vision then there is a goal action and then you have success so this is another way to think about it like a four step process and then it will be much easier as you go along this journey next we talked about as an introduction that what are sleep disorders and to understand how common they are why is this important because anything that we start 
or any small venture business or an entrepreneurship, you need to understand the need and the current scenario, what is the market situation. So what are sleep disorders? There are some very common disorders. There are some very rare disorders. Why do we need to understand? Because if you are going to have a successful sleep practice, which are the ones that you are wanting to treat as your primary risk caretakers or some you don't want to do? I'll give you an example. Suppose I'm a pulmonologist and my primary area of focus is sleep disordered breathing. But the patients coming to me do not understand or know that I I'm only my focus is sleep disordered breathing. And if we say that we are sleep specialists, you also need to understand insomnia. You also need to understand parasomnia. You need to understand circadian rhythm disorders, movement disorders and such. But yes, maybe you do not want to do so much and you want to focus on something. Then that's also a choice. How common are these sleep disorders? And that brings us to this point that should we think about setting up a practice? Should we think about going forward? There are numerous publications now available about the scenario in our country. And for people who have joined from elsewhere, you can look at it in your own countries, that what is the prevalence? How common are these disorders? So we do know that in India now, the suggestion is that there are about 70 to 80 to maybe 100 million people with sleep apnea. The prevalence can be from 11 to 20% depending upon different population groups that we study with comorbidities. And that's almost the uh, prevalence worldwide. In fact, worldwide, it's now suggested that maybe 1 billion people in the world, almost 99 million, have a sleep disordered breathing. What about others? One third of the population will have sleep insomnia. And similar things like for RLS, there are ranges from about 4 to 10%, to 10%, etc. So in short, it's a common problem. And this is the International Classification of Sleep Disorders 3, which is now is much simpler. It's divided into basically six or seven just disorders. And to understand each one or to be able to be a successful sleep practitioner, we need to at least go through all of them and understand the symptomatology. So which is not the purpose of this lecture today. So now coming to this next question. So is there a gap in care? So yes, I think whoever is here, we all and all of us who are practicing this medicine, we do know that there is a gap in this care. Why is there a gap? So there was an analysis done in other countries. I don't, I'm not aware of any analysis done in our country that why is there a gap? But the similar things are mostly applicable to most of the nations. Number one, I think, is the concept that is there, what's, how many specialists are really interested, how many are following up that there should be a need for a sleep specialist or a sleep evaluation. Second, what is the level of training available? Do we have adequate number of personnel trained? Do we have adequate number of sleep specialists? sleep technicians, sleep coaches, sleep educators who are well-trained. So that's, and then the facilities and the financials and the hospital scenarios, are there enough places which are ready to take on this modality for treatment? Like, see, if the hospitals are there, you have a gastroenterology, you have a cardiology, you have neurology. So is there a facility for sleep medicine? If not, why not? So that's one part we need to think about. And second is, yes, so if there is a gap, how do we address this? And I think most often people who are coming or asking are saying this, that, you know, how to do this? And that's what we will discuss in a little bit more detail. I'm just going to mention these few points here because for all of us who are trying to bridge this gap, you first need to understand something called as a sleep market dynamics means what is kind of changing in the sleep scenario? So first, like I've already mentioned, is this personnel. They need a special training so that we have adequate number of trained manpower. Then we have increased need to incorporate newer technologies and move along with the time. 
So which patients need level one, two, three, four is we have to think about it. Then there is a lot of shift that what kind of diagnostics, what kind of therapeutics we need to be aware. This ends, I was recently in Houston for the American Academy. There's a lot of focus on the Inspire. There are studies being done. People have done hundreds and thousands. So they are with people where the PAP failures are there. So continued search and you have to increase the awareness and there are changing rules for regulation and accreditation. Is it applicable in our country? So we do have accreditation bodies and that's how we will be able to differentiate ourselves from the run of the mill. So I would encourage people that set up your labs or centers to a level that they get accredited. And there is changing regulatory, especially for the new devices now, You have the, the centers have to have a special certificate from the pharmacy end, et cetera, to be able to deal with devices. So for a successful sleep center, in short, we need to have a very good planning. So what does it really mean is what we will discuss. Number one, as we discussed earlier, that what is the success is what it means to you. So you make your own mission statement. But whatever the mission statement is number one, most essential is that the patient first. So if we are running a clinical practice, the theme or the message or the center point has to be the patient. So first round should be to provide the ultimate and the best health care possible. And we can go into more details about what does this best health care mean? We need to educate ourselves, we need to train the staff and we need to have then we can go into details of that best health care. Do you want to also do training? So that's a continuous process of training. Whether it is a formal training or an informal training, there should be always adequate training going on. The third is, are you also wanting to do research? So if you're wanting to do research, that becomes your mission statement and you will have alliances and you will look out for alliances where I can do research. So we can discuss, so see, I do have some tie-ups. We talk to some IIT people, some ideas which come to you and you want to explore or go deeper into that. And then your also your principle or your motto is to create awareness in the community. So it depends out of these three or four, whether you keep two, whether you keep one, but you do should have a statement which you keep looking at frequently to see that am I doing all that I can. And once you have your these mission statements or mission objectives, each one, then you make a charter as to how will you accomplish it. It's not okay just to write it, but write it and take it forward. Then this brings me to the crux or the main center point, as I said, that you should have a plan. And that plan is called as a business plan. This is, what is it? It's a document that conveys, it's very nicely written, the excitement and the promise of your business, meaning that why am I doing it? So am I doing it because I like the subject? Am I doing it because I want to address my patient's queries? Whatever the reason, there's a gap, I want to bridge the gap. Second thing that it should carry is, what is it that you want to do? So I keep harping on this what, because otherwise we will get very distracted. So do I want to do only sleep studies? Do I want to offer consultation plus sleep studies? Do I want to do only level one study? But that's fine. But then you sh that should be your motto. Do I want to offer only level three, four studies? So I know people who are only doing three, four studies. I also came across a lot of community of people who overseas are only doing telemedicine. So it's their goal. They don't have a formal clinic. They don't have a center. They're just doing telemedicine. And with the telemedicine, they have a tie up for doing level three, four studies. And they're doing very well. And the next step is, of course, that how do I do this? So what do I want to do and how? And this has to be written down. So it can be one sheet of paper. It can be two sheets of paper. But please write these things down. This is just in detail. Uh, to show you what it is, but we will go over it in a very simplified manner. What does all these eight or 10 points mean? 
I can la name them for you that this is a summary that you write. You also talk about your company, meaning that who are you? What is your credentials? What is your mission? We do something called as a SWOT analysis. So people, I think doctors, mostly we are not really aware of this term. These are the business terms, but the SWOT analysis is extremely helpful. I will give you an example how you can use that SWOT analysis to your clinical practice. What is it that you are offering? What kind of a service are you offering? What is it that you are offering? And what is the team? Who's doing this? See, that's another mistake that we make. We think that me alone... As a physician, as a doctor, I can do everything. No, it won't happen. We need a team. What is your competition like? What is the market analysis? What are you going to do for your marketing? So I know in medicine and physicians, it's been mostly we are talked that, you know, you don't talk big about yourself. You don't announce anything. But if you want to really grow, you will have to put forward some thoughts. If you want to be a thought leader, that you have to talk about this so that people get to know what is it that you're doing. You have to be aware of the advances in technology and operations means what we discussed that how am I going to do this? And again, think of the risks. See, like when COVID came, nobody had thought that this is could happen. So you do need to think about some big calamity, small calamity, what's going to happen to my planning. And of course, where is the money coming from? How do I start this venture? So this is what the outline looks like. But why, why, why? What is the thing that you want to do? And what is the value to your patient? And what is it that you are doing, which is unique? How do you differ from somebody else? Because again, all around you, there might be some sleep centers, sleep labs, but there must be something unique that you do. And this I've already mentioned. So market dynamics, we discussed earlier. Understand around you, what are the sleep centers? how many kind of studies are being done, what kind of studies are being done and how you can bridge of the gap. And operations mean that you have a plan which you want to roll out. So if you think that today is August 22nd, I'm going to, and you take adequate amount of time on this. You can take four weeks, six weeks, two weeks to write this out and say, okay, October, November 1st, Diwali, I will launch it. But get so 90% of the work should be done before you kind of launch it. The financials and risk we've talked about. These are again just the elements. So what is this summary that I keep talking about? It should be the first. It's just a paragraph. It just puts everything down. Who are you? What is your credentials? What is your experience? What is your idea? And who's going to work with you? It may be one person. It may be two people. But start thinking about a team. And we'll talk a little bit about the team. Um, I'll spend a little bit more time on this because this is for a success, as we called. Don't get diluted and don't spread yourselves too thin. Think, where am I based? Am I in a hospital? So it's a hospital-based practice. So I am answerable to the hospital administration. How many studies should be done per month? What are the kind of studies? What are the kind of equipments required will change. Is this an independent diagnostic facility? So for that, the plan is going to be totally different. Is this a comprehensive center? That means there is a doctor who does consultations, evaluates patients, refers for sleep study, and we do our sleep studies. You know, something like what we do here is that I do see patients, we offer the sleep studies, but we offer sleep studies to anybody can call in and also get a sleep study. Are you only catering for adults or for children? And what is the youngest? You know, today we've had a query for like a four-year-old or a five-year-old. So am I ready for it? Do I have the supplies for it? Is my technicians ready for it? Is my room ready for it? So that is what you have to do in advance. Are you planning to do, like we mentioned this already, what kind of studies are you planning? Are you planning inpatient? Are you planning home? Are you screening tests or are you planning in patients' homes? So in patients' homes, where is your manpower? What kind of machines you have? So to be successful, think of all these. Maybe you want to start with one thing and then you add as you go along. But that's fine. So just keep that in mind. Uh, 
how many people here, if people can write in the chat box, I think it's active somewhere, how many people know about this SWOT analysis? Uh, if I can get some answers, maybe in just a minute or two, uh, then accordingly, I will go a little deeper into this SWOT. So people can uh, write on the group as to, on the chat, that do you know what is a SWOT analysis? If you don't know, then say no. If you know yes, then that's fine. I am not seeing any answers. Are people able to write? Okay, yes, no, yes. Okay, very good. Some more answers. Let's get some more. Okay, so some people have said yes, some people have said no. So let's go over it a little briefly and maybe we can all, anytime that we do it, we can still learn from it a little bit. So S is a strength. W is weaknesses. O is the opportunity and T is a threat. So strengths are what is internal. So what is it that you have? Your resources, your advantages, your unique or your USP. So who is that? These are your loyal customers, your good leadership, your skilled workforce. That means if I have a good trained, that is my strength. What is the weakness? Weakness is also internal. That is, you have an unskilled workforce. There's poor leadership, poor resources, poor planning, poor product, poor quality of work. And these is where you will lose your sales and what you can do to improve is when you get your idea. So that's fine. That's it's, But it's important to do this because then you will understand where can I improve. What is the opportunity? Is that list the chances where you should improve, the potential areas for improvement. What is the threat? This is external, meaning that anything which is going to affect your business. So it could be some of your customers will move away, some more competition will start, some new regulations will come. So this is what you should do, which is called as a SWOT analysis for yourself. This is again just the same thing. So like I said, this is just a very old slide, but you see this is the green arrow showed that this home sleep testing was high, it dropped and it now it is booming. Similar, this is in US, but I think that's how you need to understand that things will keep changing and you change along with it. Then after you've done this part, you say, okay, who is this for? What kind of people understand your demographics, understand your geography? Who am I catering to? And who is my competition? If I have 10 centers around me, what is their position? What is their, in fact, people say that you should do their SWOT analysis also. So they also have strengths and weaknesses, but you should try and then uh, fit in, in. What's the scenario like in India? We are not really sure, but maybe there are about 800 to 1000 uh, labs. And I've already told you that the estimated number of people are about 100 million. How many sleep studies we get done? Maybe 100,000. PAP devices, 25 to 40,000. And, but there are different models. So there are doctors, there are channel partners doing the studies, but that's what's happening. So what can you do? How do you build your practice? You should think that, how am I going to do marketing? See, you will get sales if you do marketing. So is this online? Is it offline? So be very clear. Have a logo, have a website, have your social media so that you can connect with people, attend meetings and get to know. But I think most important is how you come across. So one big way to get people to come over to you is by word of mouth. So that doesn't cost much. In fact, it's cost nothing. You're just making one patient happy who will talk about you and more will come. So compassion, empathy and care. This is just a little bit more detail on that. Now coming to the next point. Okay, so we've done all this. We've done the market analysis. We think we are ready. We've also decided what we want to do. So how do I do it? So we have on the operations part, we have personnel that is a staff. What kind of a facility do I need and what kind of equipment? So there are three basic requirements. 
this again will depend upon what is it that you want to do how big is the facility and what kind of so you have to do you need a manager you need a staff a reception or front office and you need a technician depending upon the number of beds depending upon the work that you do in the day you will decide whether you need one tech two techs three four whatever but i am again writing this that the hiring process has to be very streamlined and the training process has to be very streamlined for a success anything else yes as you grow you see we talked about stock there is inventory there is an accountant you have may have a patient educator you may have a marketing person and you may have a respiratory therapist so as you grow you grow the team and the other important thing is that the member that you have for a particular task please write their what is called as roles and responsibilities so it's a big exercise uh, we've just done it now again after some time and it takes a lot of time but if you are able to spend a little time on this and streamline the work for your staff you will get better productivity efficiency and output so what is a day people that you need what is the night person that you need and what are the responsibilities of the day staff for running a good center you should also have sops as you go along please start making the files that sops for procedures sop there should be certain processes and also for emergencies and a training record and i think i want to start uh, winding up here with few thoughts that for a successful as we said so this is all that you do need but what is it that i feel that i can add and which sometimes in theory we don't uh, we say but we may not do is to take care of the staff so a happy person a happy team person will make your customers happy will make your patients happy and like i said look after their growth look after their training look after their welfare and their safety so they are doing nights so the technician should be clear how many nights in a row how much off i get and what are my duties so to be successful again and again i emphasize that the team is very important equipment we've talked about depends are you doing outpatient inpatient what levels how many rooms are you doing clinical or research and then you plan your devices or machines accordingly this you all know so which machine to choose what are the duties of the staff this is very clearly you should have them assigned and the, what is the role of the managers what how is the manager then between you and the rest of the team what kind of devices you want to keep now see as more and more devices are coming more training is required some devices from here have gone out some more will keep coming some masks will keep coming this is depends if you are doing children adults you should be familiar with anything new which comes so that's what i'm emphasizing that to grow you need a continuous visualization and review of your own process and see where can i go what about the space lot of people then first who are asking that how much space do we need so depends again whether you are doing a one room sleep study or a two so that's the recording rooms but i want to emphasize that in addition to the recording rooms please have all these that there is a waiting room there is a scoring there is a reception where the patient comes and sits outside there should be a control room and of course a washroom attached to the room so these rooms are very very important when you think of a facility and the person should feel comfortable so just to go over this we've gone over most of these now that what is it that you want to give when you've done your market research your company description how to do the operations how to do the marketing last but of course the most important and not last actually it's the base of when you're planning to start this so where am i going to get the money from is it my own money is it a loan is it you know vc funded where is this coming from and what are my expenses so how will you calculate all this you first will make a chart of again what is it that you are planning to do what is the facility what are the equipments what is the manpower and in addition to this everything else so that you then you decide that how much should i charge for a patient and you need to see 
that in what is my cover up time that if i have invested so much in how much time will i kind of make that up and there will be an initial learning phase <coughs> so always start and make a plan and keep reviewing it so i just want to talk a little bit about the financials think about the building from an extent of the room furniture what kind of masks any computers also things like phones wifi marketing salary all should be considered when you're starting a sleep center what about the financials the other thing i think this is a good chart to remember that this is a car which is driving and you're getting some income and it's going on and you're feeling very happy but you have to buy things you have to pay for taxes and so you have to remember that things will keep getting emptied and that's when you have to think about that <clears throat> so there will be continuous expenses what you get at the end is what is called as a net profit so why do we have failures you know we think about all this but why so i think number one is that we don't plan adequately we don't have a good mission or a vision or a goal setting so that is number one that if i am not clear in what i want to do then it will become definitely a hodgepodge second is you don't anticipate a threat threat meaning it could be internal threat it could be you know staff related it could be external threat competition coming up third is unrealistic projections you know you open a center you say oh you know i think i'm going to get 50 studies per month from day one because i am a very well known person no no it doesn't happen like that we've had lot of people coming from the west saying oh you know 80 million to 100 million is the number of people with sleep disordered breathing in the country so we should be flooded with it takes a while you have to build the confidence build the trust build your value and then like i said people will be coming in and you don't look at your statements that is a very big thing that you know what did i start with and how am i going and you are not looking at your where am i going forward so there are certain tools which are available so when you do write this is are again the same thing that you keep measuring keep visualizing and keep saying that where is my journey it's like a um so to conclude i would say sleep disorders affects very true millions of people and yes treatment diagnosis is still a dormancy world over we are saying that 80% in men 90 85 90% of women are not being diagnosed so there is definitely a gap but to fill that gap we have to be very clear what is our role so why to do it it's clear what to do and how to do is what you need to plan uh, make a business plan this bp's business plan initially keep reviewing it and then go along so if i say that you know i think we have had the center for 15 years so maybe i had a single bed or a single device which would just be a very simple kind of a level 3 kind of device to get to get the hang of it or a level 2 but over the period of time so we do level 1 2 3 4 and a lot of newer technologies have come in which are ai based so you keep needing to incorporate staff which was maybe 3 now we are about 15 so go slowly uh, take care of the patients obviously goal first continuous upgradation of your own knowledge continuous training of your staff and keep responding to the change in environment i think that's the crux um so i tell myself and i tell also my staff that every few years i can see that when i am talking to a patient how our approach is changing you know so in this is if you read medical practice it was what is called as instructional earlier and now it is more what is called as shared decision making example is that somebody walks in and has severe sleep apnea okay ahi of maybe 50 60 70 80 so you are tempted and bmi is very high clear cut simple uncomplicated sleep apnea so you would try and insist and help make them go towards a pap but if you sense a lot of resistance 
I think then you take a step back, understand what the patient's thoughts are. Maybe he's claustrophobic, maybe he has coexistent insomnia, and you then modify your approach rather than just in emphasizing the same thing where you will lose and the patient will not listen at all. So I think this shared decision making, there should be a pause, give adequate time that let them help to make the decisions. And of course, you know, uh, as doctors, most of us don't look at the finances, don't look at, have frequent meetings with your accountants and your chartered accountants to see your profit and loss statements, income uh, expense statements, and of course, uh, the teamwork. So this is uh, our journey so far. I'm just, uh, any other questions we have? Otherwise, I have a few offers to announce. Maybe I will do that and then we will open it up for uh, questions. So the, for the people who are attending today, uh, to continue this, to make people understand sleep medicine a little bit more, we have these two big courses which are there on our website, which is sleepmedicineinstitute.in. So this is the basic course. It's been by faculty from all over and very much in detail, right from normal sleep to physiology, disorders, history taking, sleep studies, etc., reporting. And the other one, the usual prices are this, but for people who are today, we are offering uh, good discounts on this. You can take a single one, you can take a double one, and you will get almost 20 to 25% off. Um, so the batches are this. You can write emails to us if you feel that you're not able to follow right today. The first batch start date is 2nd of September, but we will close by 31st of August for this offer and the next one, and we will only take about 20. And that's what that will be. Uh, also want to announce that I am thinking that we'll do you know, frequent webinars on a lot of questions that people ask me. We will pick up those questions. And uh, next one would be the how to interpret a sleep study report. So we will start with interpreting a level one report, and then we will go to interpreting a level three report as well. And usually that will be a paid webinar, but for people who join and who pay up for the courses, it would be a more uh, for a discounted price. And you can write to us, contact us, you already know from the website. So I'm going to end here and we can uh, have some question answers. If people have something pressing to ask or they are facing some problem, we have about another 10, 15 minutes or so. Yeah, if somebody wants to ask, you can also, I think we are now okay, you can unmute yourself, uh, uh, put on your video and ask a question and I'll be glad to answer this. Any, anybody has any question? One second. Uh, there was a question. Uh, uh, Janani Akshay, where are you? Uh, where are you based, Janani? Okay, Tamil Nadu. Uh, which city? Madura. See, the level one study has a range of the price, but usually it is at least, you know, 10,000, 11,000 upwards. So some people in the hospitals are even charging 15, 12, 20, like that. Um, 
but i can tell you in delhi there are people who are doing some home studies for even half the price but i think <clears throat> if the study is done with complete american academy defined criteria if it is manually scored manual scoring takes about two and a half to three hours uh, you know it should be charged that much uh, somebody was raising a hand uh, vivek or something you can want to ask i think you can un can you unmute yourself or is it not possible i think it can or you want to write that's also fine Somebody had raised a hand. Unmute nahi ho ra? One second. Yes, now? Okay. Yes, yeah. Okay. So, Vivek? Yes, uh, Just can you introduce yourself, Vivek? Where are you from and what is your... Uh, Okay, so I have your, I think we have your number. So my one yes, of my staff will get in touch with you and uh, also share the complete information about the courses. Okay, uh, Minakshi, can you note his name and number and just, you know, we can connect with him tomorrow and tell him exactly what is being covered. Okay. Sure, ma'am. Yes, we will send a recorded uh, video and the video, actually the video will also go on to our sites and on YouTube. Uh, as a dentist, how can we convince the patient for a sleep study? So I think this is a important question, not only for a dentist, but even for many specialities. Uh, that people are always asking that I'm not able to convince for a sleep study. So this, I think, is a good question or we can do a separate complete at least 15 minutes talk on that. But in short, what I would say is that first, you need to be convinced yourself. Second, you need to be very updated and clear about the role of sleep study in improving that patient's outcome because they need to be impressed by your knowledge as to why should I get this done. So I'll give you an example. <clears throat> if somebody has come to you and while you see them, you see that they're not able to open their mouth. It's almost malampati is grade three, four. They are choking very badly or they have severe bruxism or they have total wearing of an enamel. So you have to give them the reason now as to what is the reason that you are asking for a sleep study. So they, they need to know the reason because if you tell them just to get a sleep study, they will not get it done. Uh, so we have some dentists here. Do you also provide assistance? In, so we have a course there and I had the course from the British Association and also there is a dentist, a lady who does sleep medicine in uh, Europe. We will try and we are looking to do like a workshop. So people who are interested as dentists to go further, you can send us an email. We'll try and do like a online, maybe two, three hours kind of a program with the uh, senior people in the field of dental sleep medicine in uh, UK and Europe. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, good evening, ma'am. Uh, myself, Dr. Anil Gangwar, Associate Professor, M. Skorakpur. Okay. Uh, actually, ma'am, Raksha Vandhan ke baad, ghar se lot ke aara tha, to drive kar raha tha, gaadi pura session sun nahi paaya hai aapka. So, ha. please kindly share the, uh, your talk. Uh, sure. So, all in group, those... Indian somnologist or any other like, wedding okay. physiologist. Take yeah. it. So all those who have registered today, we will send you the email, uh, the YouTube link. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Welcome. Anybody has any other uh, questions or the other way around? Let's ask some questions that how many people are uh, practicing uh, all levels of sleep study? 
or are they doing it themselves or are they getting it done? Can they write in the chat box? How many of you are uh, regularly doing? Okay, Shweta is doing level one and two. <clears throat> Anybody else is doing regularly sleep studies? Level two. So, Somya, level two means that the you are sending somebody home, is it? Okay. And so not too many are doing the level three and four. So, and how much is the waiting time for those who are doing level one? How much is your waiting time? So, Selva Kumar, what is your speciality, Selva? Why is this not getting you unmute? I thought people can't see. Three to four days. Okay, so I think some people are <clears throat> not clear about the protocols for HST. So we can uh, write that also down. Maybe uh, we can do a small talk on indications, contraindications for uh, HST and how to incorporate HST in your practice. Because that's a much simpler thing and it will help people, you know. Okay, so I think then we are done for today. What we will do... Ma'am, ma ma one question, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, again, I am Dr. Lengwar from M. Skorakur. Uh -huh. Ma'am, I uh, just want uh, uh, a suggestion. Uh, please, uh, everybody uh, doing webinar on how to set up a, a sleep lab or managing the sleep lab. My just only one request, please conduct a webinar on how to treat the sleep uh, disorders, different sleep disorders. Maybe multiple webinar may be needed on that topic. So ma'am, please, I am requesting you. So please. Uh, sure, sounds good. Uh, but you know, the thing is that uh, if we talk about treatment, I've got it, treatment of sleep disorders is your question. Okay. Treatment but, management of sleep disorders, treatment plus uh, which diagnostic modality, in which case we need a PSG or in which case just need a clinical history and then treatment in both cases. Okay. So actually, you know, uh, I agree. So it will become quite, I'm trying to figure out, I know practically, but what will happen is you are right. Before you go to treatment, we need to yeah. take a good history. Yeah. So in order to take a good history, we should be aware of all the different types of sleep disorders. Yes, yes. No and their clinical features. So if you see the uh, modules in the course, which is called basic course in sleep medicine. Yes, uh, it has at least I have covered all that. In I have done it, ma'am, in, uh, in uh, ACE. A school of a semen in 2020 or 21. I have covered all the topics, okay. but uh, ma'am, yeah, per patient at the budding phase may have score a poor though sleep care regarding questions push the or treatment push naturally. So, my people, yeah, yes, why we can also do one thing. Can next time, if once we are announcing regular things, uh, yeah. somebody can present a case, yeah, ticket. And then we can say, how would we approach that case? Yes. Sir. So you are welcome. We can have a session. Like you present a case. 
एंड लाइक यू नो एक कॉन्फ्रेंसेस वगैरह में होता है मीट द एक्सपर्ट टाइप्स ना सो दैट विल हेल्प यू आल्सो बिकॉज देन इट विल बिकम मोर स्पेसिफिक यस मैम ठीक है तो तो प्रॉब्लम्स दैट यू आर फेसिंग सो दैट्स फाइन आई मीन दैट्स ओके यस मैम एक्चुअली मैम देयर आर सो मेनी स्लीप एडिटिंग डिसऑर्डर्स जिसमें हमको पीएचडी की जरूरत नहीं है नो नो यू आर राइट हमको पता नहीं है और सारे लोग जो माल प्रैक्टिस कहिए जो भी कहिए चल रहा है कंट्री में हर एक को पीएचडी कराना देन ट्रीटमेंट के नाम पे नोना जी पाम खिलाना और ये सब चीज चल रहा है सो आई वांट एक्चुअली मैं मैं एक्सपर्ट हो जाऊंगा देन मैं आपके नेक्स्ट प्रोग्राम नहीं मैं मैं नेक्स्ट लेवल को ट्रेन करूंगा ठीक है ट्रेन करने से मतलब मैं अपना कोर्स नहीं चलाऊंगा मैं लेकिन मतलब नहीं नहीं मैसेज तो कन्वे कर सकता हूं नहीं नहीं इट हैज टू गो फॉरवर्ड द होल आईडिया इज दिस दैट द गैप इज ट्रिमेंडस वी कैन नॉट सर्व दिस गैप वी नीड मोर पीपल टू कम फॉरवर्ड एंड लर्न so let's do one thing so i have written this down that i think your question now if i make it simpler is that when is a sleep study not required in a patient with a sleep disorder to so uska to yes, i can yes. give you a lot of cases and we, i have managed numerous without sleep studies yeah okay theek hai mai wo uska hum we can do a web, webinar on that okay. sure okay thank you thank you very much josh and i think second which i think which we will do that's because it's good idea because get topics here second is something called as hst so all the people who are uh, in the areas and also starting their careers in this um, to try and set up these big labs and so much expense technical manpower is too much so you can easily at least start addressing sleep disordered breathing with hst so there is no harm you get more confident and you move forward into level 1 and 2 so we can have a session on hst okay which is much easier cost wise uh, technology technical financial everything is reduced okay anything else anybody has otherwise then we'll wind up and i will we will share the link with you just give us a day or two okay thank you again then uh, for all those who attended and uh, and the ones who couldn't we'll share the things thank you